Hello everyone, welcome to another webinar here at AQ. Well, depend of your region, good morning, good afternoon, and good night, maybe for our Australian friends. Um, thanks again for joining us in this new webinar. My name is Ramon Gonzalez, I belong to the international sales team. Um, today, we will be talking about of our commentary system, Olympia 3, as a perfect solution for OB bands operations. Um, with me is my colleague Peter Howard, which will be on charge of the presentation. Hey Peter, how are you? Hi, good morning, Ramon. Thank you. It's yeah, good to good see morning. you and good to see that we have so many people joining us. Thank you. Okay, yes, yes. Thanks for all. Okay, um, like all webinars people, uh, there is a panel when you can, when you can write down all your questions. Okay, and um, uh, at the end of the session, Peter will be glad to uh, attend more of them. In case we are run out of time, the other ones will be answered by email. Uh, or if you prefer, you can write us directly to our email, uh, which is marketing at aq.es, and we will be receiving your questions. Okay, also, there is a survey before you leave. Okay, really, we appreciate you. We appreciate your suggestions and your answers in order to keep preparing good quality content for the next presentations. Okay, um, today uh, we will be going through these points. Uh, number one, about AQ, who we are, uh, what we do. Uh, then uh, AQ at export events, okay, uh, using our Olympia tree. Uh, why Olympia tree? Very important point. Uh, the description of the equipment, configuration and control, user cases, and finally, use case at big events, okay, the sport events. Okay, um, well, uh, I'm sure most of you know uh, about AQ before, but for new guests, uh, as you may know, AQ is a Spanish manufacturer with more than 40 years developing manufacturing and selling solutions for the broadcast industry, especially for radio and TV stations. Through these years, our presence have reached more than 7,000 customers in more than 90 countries. Also, AQ have a, a sales network of international offices. They are located in Spain, Portugal, USA, Mexico, and India. In our website, you can find all of our dealer network they are, they are listed by region. Please contact them anytime you need. Or if you prefer, you can write us directly and we will be glad to attend your inquiries. Okay. Um, yes, Peter, the next slide. Okay. Uh, the product portfolio of AQ is divided in five families. Okay. Um, the family number one is all related to audio over IP solutions like broadcast consoles, audio routers, and Dante interfaces. The other family, the family of communications, where we can find our famous multi-conference system for talk show programs called Sistel IP, and our portable and fixed audio codecs. The intercom family, very important family as well, with powerful options for matrix and matrix-less intercom solutions. The software uh, family, where um, we can provide a uh, play out automation and visual radio system. And finally, our family of high degrees broadcast monitors. Okay, uh, as a reminder, again, uh, there is a panel where you, you can write down the, the questions, okay, for, for the final of the presentation. And also, we have a survey, please, before you leave, uh, they give us uh, your suggestion and your answers, okay? That they are very important for us. Okay, Peter, so I think this was the introduction. <laughs> so Thanks. go ahead Thank with the people. Thank you very much, uh, Ramon. Uh, thank you for that introduction. Yeah. So uh, let's begin with, the, um, with the, the history, a little bit of history here. So that wasn't very well written. We, we refer to sport events, of course, not sport event. Uh, anyway, the, uh, we've been a service uh, and equipment provider to the different uh, host broadcasting organizations uh, 
uh, for large sport events since uh, Seoul Olympics in 1988. And the first commentary system that we built was the DCS-10, uh, just to put everything in a little bit of an historical context. The DCS-10 was a first in many, many aspects. It was the first one that was used uh, with a digital link between the CCR, the commentary control room, that is, and the, and the proper commentary position or the commentary unit. So we conveyed the audio in digital format between the two uh, units, the control unit and the commentary unit. Um, that was uh, used for the first time in Nagano in 1998. Uh, then we moved on to the uh, uh, the current uh, system that is in use uh, uh, alongside the Olympia three that we'll talk on talk about and that we are focusing on uh, for this webinar. It's the NCS Olympia. The NCS Olympia was uh, is based on a, a module matrix system. So this is our second generation uh, commentary system. And uh, this uh, is a system that is based on, as I said, a matrix with a, a centralized control. And uh, it, this system was used for the first time during the Winter Olympics in 2010 in Vancouver. Um, this system has serviced uh, over 1,200 commentary positions at the latest uh, Summer Games in, in Tokyo, that was. And then uh, the Olympia 3, which is our third generation commentary unit. And uh, I'm saying unit, it's not uh, only a system, but it is a unit because uh, you will see why we moved uh, into the uh, Olympia 3 after these two uh, very successful experiences that we had with the DCS and the NCS systems. So as I said, why were we evolving to Olympia 3? Well, we were see seeking to simplify the use of, of uh, the commentary units. Uh, uh, commentary systems to us had been based on a centralized uh, operation where the control was uh, uh, using a dedicated control software, uh, software and hardware, uh, but relying heavily on 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 the centralized hardware. Now the commentary unit Olympia Three is a completely decentralized and standalone unit, which means that we can use it for a, a standalone um, unit, and we can go uh, to a very large system that is only depending really on on the size of the network that we we have available to uh, use for contribution and uh, and transport of audio. So um, um, uh, it was also uh, thought by us that we wanted to integrate it in our, in our uh, intercom systems and make it an integral part of our inter intercom systems that are uh, very popular among OB, OB van, OB truck uh, builders and operators uh, because um, uh, the coordination and the uh, uh, setup of the of the event is uh, of vital importance. Uh, we in implemented the intercom function into the commentator unit as well. So it has a uh, an intercom panel function as well. And as I said, we don't have any specific or dedicated hardware is required for the source and destination of audio signals. Any AES or six, uh, 67 or Dante compatible device can service the Olympia 3 uh, with audio uh, for uh, both contribution and monitoring purposes. All right. So uh, just describing very quickly the equipment, uh, what it looks like. Uh, the front panel, uh, which is basically the operator panel for three commentators, where we have a uh, dynamic labels uh, on the LCD displays that are backlit. Uh, they are um, uh, backlit uh, uh, and they work very very well in direct sunlight and they work also in very dark uh, environments. <clears throat> There's a function key that can allow us to select the operational mode if we want to be it as a commentary unit or if we want to operate it in our hybrid mode as a as an intercom panel at the same time. Uh, the channel section, uh, channel one selection, the channel commentary channel number one has uh, the associated keys for the intercoms. So we have, uh, for example, page moding. Uh, uh, we have the menu uh, for for the actual uh, intercom functions, and we can also adjust the cross point um, gain for for the intercom channels. It, these channels also have an LED for tally, uh, indicating what mode the intercom uh, channel is is used. If it's talk, talk and listen, monitoring, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. 
Uh, <clears throat> then uh, the the other keys here that you see they are the the monitoring keys for any commentator. So these keys are used to activate and deactivate the monitoring sources that we we want to have as a commentator. Uh, we can choose also to go into select mode and choose whether right, left, or both uh, head headphones monitoring. We can also adjust the the gain with the uh, encoder here. Uh, there's a separate uh, channel info for each uh, each commentator. That means that any commentator can have a specific. We can have three commentators sitting at the desk, but or at the unit but they can have independent um, monitoring sources, of course. Uh, they don't need to, to monitor all the same signals and sources. Uh, that is not necessary. And one could be a technical uh, commentator that, for example, is constantly using the coordination circuit rather than the uh, program circuit. Uh, the general encoder, as I said, it has double function. It serves as just general gain control for your headsets. And at the same time, we can also adjust an individual cross point for the monitoring or for the intercom uh, uh, sources. Then there's an individual uh, uh, mic input switch, which lights up uh, showing that we have the mic activated to the program circuit. And then there's a VU meter that is indicating uh, the the gain of uh, the, it's actually a pre fader gain. So it doesn't matter if the mic is on or off. The commentator will always see that his mic is connected and is in hot mode to the commentator uh, or to the microphone input of the commentator unit. The uh, <clears throat> the rear of the equipment uh, it also has a line output, stereo line output, or, or two mono line outputs, the two line inputs as well. Uh, they can be mono or stereo as well, of course. And these serves for to have local inputs and outputs, for example, for a diversity mic system. If we have a roving reporter pitch side or whatever, uh, these or for example, we receive a local uh, PA source at the cabin, and so on and so forth. Then there's the local power supply. The unit is PoE plus powered on the on the principal uh, uh, Dante network or the audio over IP network connector. So the, the main and then the backup, and then there's a third uh, uh, um, port, gigabit port that is available as well. And this one allows us to have transparent uh, data flow uh, to the unit, could be used for example, as a video, uh, a video return link, and we could connect it to a, a video decoder and and show it on a, on a on a computer screen or on a monitor uh, that we have available. On the front of the unit, we have our mic inputs, of course, three mi individual mics. These are, of course, a uh, phantom option. Uh, with uh, uh, so, so it handles phantom up to 48 volts. And the three individual headphone outputs uh, that we have here as well. So configuration and control is done with a simple software, as I said. We 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 really wanted this unit to be reliable only on a software control, not having to depend on specific uh, or dedicated hardware to control it. What was used in the traditional commentary units and con uh, traditional commentary systems. So this unit uh, allows us to configure configure the the unit with simple software. The only thing we need is the, the CU control and CU setup software that comes um, with the unit when you when you purchase it. Then the uh, free Dante controller, which is uh, available at the Audinate uh, website, of course, where we can use it as a uh, cross point. Uh, uh, it's just a routing uh, and cabling uh, device, basically. And then the cross mapper, if we are hooking up the commentary unit to a, an in, a intercom system from AEQ. In the event you want to, to control several CUs and you don't have initial control with the commentator, you would like to have a, an intercom uh, source or oh, sorry, an, uh, an intercom channel available with the commentator unit and the computer where you're controlling the, the, the commentary unit from, you will need a uh, you will need a Dante virtual sound card installed on your on your computer. Uh, that allows you to uh, route your mic to a Dante channel, send it to the commentary unit, 
uh, for the committee to be able to have a technical conversation uh, with the uh, with the uh, uh, audio technician at the EOB van, for example, or uh, wherever the um, technician is seated. All right. Uh, then uh, when when the setup is done, uh, we have a control uh, section of the software that I will go in and show you later. Uh, and the first thing that you will see on the on the screen is the right side. Basically, we will see a list of of commentary of commentary uh, units. Uh, the green ones showing that we are online. Uh, red ones would indicate either an alarm or a, it's offline. And the right side would be the the actual control once we uh, open any of the available uh, uh, commentary units in the list. I think the best uh, thing we can do is to show you uh, show you the actual software uh, for that. So I'm going to show you the Olympia three software, and I will also show you the commentary unit uh, uh, that makes. Uh, more sense than seeing my face. So as you can see, the first thing that you, you will see when you open the, the software is the list of the CUs. In this case, these are the CUs that we have configured here. There's only one active, the other two are not connected. And the I only need to click on the, on the actual uh, uh, IP address and I will open the, the software. So if I, if I, I'm sorry, I'm going to close that a little bit because I can't access it. So as you can see, we can see here that the, the, the mic uh, number one, even if it's not on, we get a reading. So it's following the the actual view meters. As you can see here, we can turn it on. And then uh, we, we can see that we have a, a reading on it. We can also, um, for example, uh, adjust the the overall gain on the program output. Uh, we can monitor all the signals, and we can also generate tech calls. And any operation that I do from the actual CU, I can also assist the commentator from the control software. So, for example, if the, if I want to talk to the technician, you just hit the tech call, and I can talk to this guy from here merely opening the microphone as you can see it's peaking and once i'm done with the com communication i've assisted the commentator I, I just close the communication um as you can see there's a depending on if we have configured a coordination channel these are either um the we can switch these functions to be latching or ptt in in a commentator mode of course it's typical to have the the program as a uh, latching and the coordination channel would be a uh, PTT, which means that as long as I keep it pressed, I'm uh, releasing the microphone from the program channel and I'm sending it to the coordination uh, circuit. Uh, we can also activate the phantom power directly from the software. We can also activate any DSP function that we want to render the uh, channels for. We can EQ any channel available on the unit, apply low pass or high pass filters, level processors, noise gates, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, uh, all these functions are available through software. The unit also counts on ID messages. So we can actually record up to four one minute long ID messages that we can uh, used to identify, uh, for example, our program circuits in the OB van. If we are sending, for example, three individual mic uh, uh, signals to the OB van to the to the mixer to, to do the down mix, we can do that from there. Anyways, uh, the software requires a lot of of um, of uh, of uh, training, uh, basically because it has so many different functions. It's an easy software to operate. It's uh, very intuitive. But the only thing is that once you've uh, done your uh, your configuration, you arrive to the actual control. So if we want to configure the unit, the only thing we need to do is to go to the CU configuration. We can either run the wizard, which allows us to, uh, with a very simple way, determine uh, what in, uh, returns or monitoring signals I will have at the commentary unit, uh, the IP range, and I can define how many CUs I want to to configure in that range. So it starts with 150 and would 
in this case, bandwidth 160. And you just <clears throat> uh, create a, a list of commentary units with, a, with the same configuration. Or we can also configure this individually, basically just entering the setup and then define for each commentator's channel or commentary channel, uh, what we are going to have available. If we are using com uh, program, if we are using tech core uh, or not, uh, if the, uh, the commentator should have access to the coordination or not, uh, that depends if we uh, allow the, the coordination bus to be available for each commentator or not. And then in the case of the first channel, as we said, we can also activate the intercom uh, functionalities of the CUs if it's connected to a um, to an AEQ intercom system. Once we're done, we just send the configuration to the CU and uh, we restart the application uh, like it should do right now. So, I'm going to go back to the actual presentation and continue uh, continue with that. So, um, and then I'm going to move to the integrated webcam as well. So let's move into the use cases. Um, the the Olympia is very flexible and it's scalable. As I said, it, it can be scalable to the actual size of any, any network that we're hooked uh, up to, really. We don't need any dedicated software, uh, hardware, sorry. Uh, so um, uh, we, can be, we can build it uh, depending on the size of the, of the actual network. So let's have a look at the different use case scenarios where the Olympia 3 is a, a very a very suitable uh, companion for your outside broadcasts. For example, in any OB van or any OB operation, uh, like in this case, this is the Spanish VAV uh, uh, OB operator. Uh, they are using the Olympia 3 in their OB vans and they normally connect it. Well, it's normally connected to their local area network or, or audio over IP network of the OB unit. That uh, audio over IP network is also used for the their cross-net uh, intercom matrix and user panels. And then uh, in this uh, particular case, in this uh, UM21, the uh, audio console for the audio or the A1 uh, engineer is a color hydra. It's a summer, uh, and, and this is used for the final mix and broadcast uh, uh, both the commentary and the international sound and any other uh, audio sources that they have available in the in the OB operation. So uh, alternatively, the CU can be connected directly with the mixing console without uh, going through the through the cross net. But uh, typically, it's uh, hooked up to the uh, to the cross net audio uh, intercom. And during the setup, the CU channel one, uh, of course, is used as a, an intercom, which is allowing uh, the operators to set up the, the cabins uh, and have a coordination, technical coordination during the setup without any, at all places, including the commentator cabin. Uh, similar use cases would be the Casablanca Online uh, uh, OB units. Casablanca Online uh, is another OB uh, operator in Brazil. Um, they use the commentary units for their on-site production when they are, whenever they are deploying their their OB units. Um, typically, they are using Allen Heath audio consoles for their OB vans, and they do a direct connection between several CUs and the conduct and the production console. Uh, the, this picture is showing the setting up of a, of a match between uh, Flamengo and Fluminense. So it depends on the. On the event, uh, the commentators uh, can can be either on site or they can also operate off site. So, for example, they convey all the international sound back to the headquarters, and then they could comment in the off tube cabins. So they have a mixed operation that is happening with other remote um, 
productions that I will show you a little bit later on. Uh, it's also being combined with speak matrix less intercom systems, uh, like for example, the swearing in of the president Lula da Silva. Uh, that's another multilateral production where the system was coordinated with this uh, intercom system, which is not a matrix based system, but it's it's uh, hooking up through the interfaces of the speak system. Sorry for jumping that. Then uh, using a fly pack, for example, for smaller events like the, the CrossFit Freakist Challenge 2021 in Barcelona. This was a hybrid system that was inter integrating both intercom and commentary. So they had four commentary positions, uh, one for the, for the different participating languages or, or nationalities in Italian, Catalan, Spanish, and English. And uh, the, the, the audio over IP network uh, was um, uh, funneled through the uh, Yamaha QL5 uh, mixer to do the down mix and to handle all the different uh, sources and returns. So the return feed for and guide for each of the commented boxes were either originated from the, from the intercom system or directly from the mixer. So any other uh, audio over IP device could also provide uh, uh, audio signals to the commentary units. Uh, this production was relying on a cross net intercom matrix again. So it's a very, very useful uh, combination to have the intercom using the, the, uh, the commentary unit as an intercom uh, panel at the same time as it's acting as a commentary unit. Uh, it's important to know that the crossnet uh, uh, matrices have a, an additional 32 channels always available for audio over IP uh, can, that can be used for these IFBs or any other sourcing through the through the intercom. Uh, actually not used as an intercom then, but as a, an audio matrix. Uh, Small but complex events, for example, the World Games in, in uh, 2022, last year in Birmingham, Alabama. Uh, this is a multi-sport event uh, where they were uh, using, uh, the ISB was the host broadcaster here, uh, and they were using the intercom uh, from AQ, the CrossNet, for the coordination. Uh, at the same time, uh, they were using the Olympia 3s for the fully equipped commentary position, so it was a more traditional host broadcasting operation with uh, with fully equipped commentator positions and centralized audio contribution and distribution. And then they also had uh, the Olympia 3s in the off-tube uh, cabins, uh, which is another application, of course. And this event was a multi-equipment event, so it was combining also uh, uh, audio codecs, audio audio codecs for partially equipped commentary positions and then uh, also uh, using other codecs and and other equipment uh, in the in the uh, partially equipped uh, commentary positions. There were even talents used for uh, EQ talent audio codecs used for coordination uh, by different federations uh, and uh, of course codecs from other manufacturers at the same time. Uh, Pan American Games in Lima, twenty nineteen. Uh, it, this is a medium-sized event as well. This, well, at Pan American Games is a, a normally a rather big sporting event, but from a broadcasting point, it might not be that huge. Uh, on this occasion, 35 Olympia CUs uh, were deployed as a traditional commentary system for the for, for uh, from and service uh, provided by the host broadcaster. Uh, and uh, they had a central centralized uh, audio contribution distribution system. They were conveying the signals actually via via audio codec. So the they weren't using a, a large area uh, network or a one with a Dante domain, for example, for for the contribution. They were using uh, local uh, audio over IP connecting with the AEQ Venus three audio codecs that were used for the. Uh, for the national contribution down to the IBC, and then also for the international distribution. Uh, the CU can also be used for remote production. Uh, well, uh, as long as you have an audio over IP network with capability, uh, you can do this. For example, Suora in this case, which is uh, uh, a Finnish uh, telecoms operator, they are handling the uh, SM Liga and they have the rights for that, and they also do the production. 
and they do it on a remote production basis. They have the headquarters in Helsinki and uh, they do uh, all the different matches uh, on every on every match day. Um, they do it with the Olympia 3. The Olympia 3 can either be deployed at uh, each venue or it can be in the uh, uh, off-tube cabins in the headquarters at the headquarters of, of Suora in Helsinki. The the one IP links are provided by Telia, which is part of the Swara group. And they are using Dante domain managers to handle the, the contribution network. Uh, but the contribution network on, not only handles the audio over IP, they also handle the video on that network. And they have a very impressive uh, system built in, in, um, in Helsinki for this. Um, uh, it was a system integration done by Proco Solutions Nordic, actually. Uh, bigger events, more complex, uh, as I said, it all depends on the size of the network. The European Championships, the first European Championships uh, in Berlin and Glasgow in 2018 was done with the Olympia 3s. So there were actually like two IBCs. Well, actually it was one IBC and then there was a like a sub-IBC in Berlin uh, <clears throat> where we had a total of 16 venues and, and a lot of CUs deployed like uh, traditional uh, host broadcasting uh, commentary operation. So there were more than 80 Olympia 3s that were connected through a contribution network to, to both IBCs. Um, and we were using uh, also crossnet, uh, sorry, intercom systems uh, from AQ to, to coordinate all this. At each uh, competition venue, there were also net boxes deployed, the 8 and 32, and, in, and also the net box 4 audio over IP. And this was handling, for example, unilateral audios from the mixed zones, et cetera, et cetera. And then the common signal, uh, common signals were handled by the net box 8 and 32s. The international contribution for some of the RHDs or RHB, sorry, uh, were done with uh, like like in the Pan American Games, uh, but the international contribution was done with uh, with uh, twenty Venus three audio codecs with audio over IP connectivity. So they were sitting in the in the Glasgow audio uh, IBC on that occasion. So that was basically what what uh, the uh, typical venue looked like. Uh, we had the commentary positions with the commentary units, uh, POE switches to handle uh, main and back and backup. Sorry, um, uh, POE on the main and not POE on the on the backup because we had local power supplies as well. Then in the mix zone, in the mix zones, we used the uh, netbox four MH with mic and headphone outputs for the for the journalists interviewing. And then the common signals were handled by the net box, basically where we we, we distributed all the international uh, sound, the PA guys, auxiliary signals, et cetera, et cetera. And then uh, for there was a, in the, a intercom system connected uh, with, uh, with the VTM and the commentary control room and back to the IBC uh, uh, via the, the, the one contribution network. Uh, this year, the FIFA Basket World Cup was between the Philippines and, and Indonesia. And the, in the Philippines, all the commentary units fully equipped were using the, uh, the um, uh, Olympia 3s. Media Pro was acting as a host broadcaster in, in the Philippines, and uh, they were working in collaboration with the local partner, Signal TV. They were also using the intercom system for all the technical coordination. So again, uh, another uh, combined operation between Crossnet Intercom and the commentary unit uh, in part of the, the overall uh, audio installation and audio equipment uh, used to, to both coordinate and comment from, from this uh, uh, great sporting event. Uh, another application, of course, um, the off-tubes. Off-tubes uh, normally only requires a video signal and international sound signal, uh, maybe a guide at some point, and we can comment uh, from uh, uh, an audio-proofed cabin or a room uh, that we have uh, fixed up in in our in our fixed installations or in 
in the IBC, for example, if we are at, a, at an international event. So off-tube uh, operations or simultaneous translation is another application that, where, where we can use uh, the Olympia 3 without any without any problem at all. Uh, it can be part of the overall audio over IP network within the station. So very large uh, events like um, this year, uh, the Hangzhou Asian Games in, in Hangzhou, China. Uh, we we deployed in total 150 CUs for the different venues, a total of 35 venues actually. Uh, it was a similar setup as the European Games, where we were using net boxes. But uh, in this on this occasion, net boxes also were, were doing a lot of routing and switching on local level, where we had the commentary positions and then the standard position mix zones, and uh, the venue common signals. Uh, uh, were, were going through the net boxes. Uh, and the, then there was, of course, a virtual CCU control for the commentary positions in the CCR. Back to the T TOC. And then over the contribution network to, to uh, the International uh, Broadcast Center, where we had a matrix uh, um, to handle the distribution in, uh, to the different rights holders. And we were also doing all the most of the control and monitoring uh, for for the venues and also for the off tubes. Since the IBC also is a venue, we had off tube uh, uh, commentary units installed at the at the uh, at the and bookable, of course, uh, for the RHBs uh, at the at the IBC. So this was a big uh, event for us. Uh, began at the eighth of September. Uh, Sorry, no, 8th of September, it began on the 23rd of September and 8th, 8th of October was the closing ceremony in Hangzhou. Uh, so typically the venue looked like this, we, as I said, uh, very similar to the European Games, commentary positions at the venue, uh, a net box, uh, a network uh, node, where we had all the common signals, including uh, international sound, PA guides, et cetera, et cetera. And then these uh, net boxes were also used for the contribution network uh, to uh, channel all the commentary units, uh, the audio signals from the commentary units back to the IBC via the uh, contribution network. So I'm going to show you a few pictures from, from Hangzhou. Uh, in this case, this is uh, table tennis. And here they actually have e-games uh, on, on the agenda also in the uh, uh, Asian games. Uh, and uh, this was basket and gymnastics. So uh, this was a big event for us and uh, we had a, a uh, we had four people deployed from early, well, 1st of September, basically until the 10th of October in, in Hangzhou. And here's the whole team uh, in the commentary switching with our four guys and then our Chinese colleagues from Sinotech that uh, handled uh, most of the, most of the uh, technical coordination uh, with the host broadcaster, in this case, uh, China Media Group. Uh, with that, we've come to the end of the presentation, and uh, we should open the floor for any Q&A, uh, any question uh, that you may have, and see if we can answer those questions. So, Ramon, um, I'm handing over to you, and see if you can moderate this uh, Q&A session, please. Okay. Okay. Um, yes. Fantastic presentation, Peter. Congrats. Thank you. Okay. Um, well, people, yes. Uh, let's start with the Q and A face round. Okay. Uh, I have several several questions here, so uh, let's start with the first one. Okay, from Ryan Peter. Mm -hmm. uh, let me read. Let me. When AQ recommend using audio codex or use Olympia three. I think when AEQ recommend yeah. using audio codes or when AEQ use Olympia, uh, recommend to use Olympia 3. I don't know what. Uh, but that, that is a, that is a, 
question of application, right? Yeah, it's a question of what what we have available and what networks we have available for. For example, if we are deploying a, an OB unit um, with uh, with uh, um, mixing consoles with cameras, and we are doing a our own unilateral production. Uh, it might be a good idea to, if that Toby van counts on audio over IP network, I would probably deploy it in Olympia because it's so much uh, more comf comfortable to work with uh, one single network uh, during during the operation. If I'm only deploying a, a commentator uh, to a stadium where I'm only going to send back audio to my headquarters, I'm not deploying any other unilateral resources, I would probably go with an audio codec because it it's you have everything in one box. But then it, it all depends on how many signals you need to monitor as a commentator because some commentators want to have a lot of, of signals available for monitoring purposes. Uh, in that case, the Olympia 3 comes handy because you have so many different sources to monitor. Right? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. That yeah, you can yeah. configure. That but... Uh, uh, when it's a one-man show, basically, or a couple of commentators doing uh, one one match without any other unilateral uh, contribution, but the audio, an audio codec uh, would serve. Yes. Okay. Nice. Well, um, the other one is from Gabor. Oh, Gabor. Gabor. Okay. Uh, what headsets, microphones do you recommend? Uh, <laughs> a myriad of headsets obviously depending on, on where you are uh, uh, the microphone should be uh, very directional of course uh, trying to avoid um, um, bleed from the front and try to keep the microphone as close as to the mouth as possible so phantom is is probably a a good option I wouldn't recommend any particular brand. There are many, many good. They don't have sponsors. <laughs> no, no, not not. not they don't have sponsors. There are many nice. Uh, it's a matter of taste, of course, and it depends on, on the com commentator and how, how his voice sounds and how he feels with. Uh, and then, of course, how long you're going to sit with a headphone and that. I mean, there are ma many different combinations. You can have a headphone and use a lip mic, for example, which is. A very common way to do things in the Anglo-Saxon world, or you can use a, a standard headset like uh, like the one that I have here, which is a basic uh, AKG. Uh, with the, a, it's not a it's a, has a cardioid pattern, but it's not a it's not a phantom powered microphone. It's a dynamic microphone. So uh, low impedance headphones and the mic uh, proximity and direction. Okay. Okay. Um, the other question is from Samir. Mm -hmm. What is the audio quality of the CU? Uh, the CU is broadcast quality. The internal sampling uh, we are using uh, always for digital is uh, 2448, so 24. Uh, 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 24 bits, uh, 48 kilohertz. So it's uh, full bandwidth and uh, broadcast yeah. quality. Yeah, yeah, for sure. OK, uh, from Andreas. Mm -hmm. um, OK, when you have a very large system, uh, how do you add the units in the configuration software? Uh, well, uh, depending on what you mean with a very large system, if it's a Typically, uh, very large systems are um, multi-venue, multi-sport, or it can be a very large uh, venue, like uh, it can be uh, FIFA World Cup final, for example, in a in a stadium. It can has a, which typically has a lot of commentary units because it, there are a lot of, of presence by rights holders covering not only the the two nations that are. Or disputing the final, no? uh, the, the 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 software you can add. Uh, I mean, you only need to add the IPs, uh, IP addresses for the CUs, and then you need to configure each of 
those CVs. It's very simple to do it with a with a setup software, either with a wizard or manually, just adding IP addresses. Okay. 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 Uh, the the number of units that you should be able to control is is a lot, of course. Yeah. 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 Um, okay, from Kevin, mm -hmm. we have an eSport company mm -hmm. uh, or iSport company. Si. Can we use Olympia 3 standalone or it's necessary to integrate it with your intercom also? No, it's not necessary to integrate it with intercom. The intercom is actually, that's a plus for those that have intercom systems from us. But if you don't have an intercom system, that function is not... Uh, it, not accessible and you don't have to configure it, of course. Uh, we have a lot of customers using these units in eSports and uh, some of them have intercom, some don't. So, and uh, since uh, you can hook it up, if it's a, a, uh, another intercom system with audio over IP connectivity, you don't have any signaling, but you can use their intercom system, the other intercom system as audio sources for your, for your returns yeah, as a commentator, yes. So you don't need an intercom system from us to have that. Yes, yes. There's no need for dedicated hardware uh, for this unit. Exactly. Okay, from Vasil, how many units the configuration software can handle? Uh, the configuration software can <laughs> configure many, many, but the control, if he's referring to the control, uh, typically the standard, uh, Standard software, uh, it, it depends on the, the capacity of the te technician, I would say. There are technicians that are able to handle up to 20 CUs, but uh, typically you would handle maybe 10 because uh, uh, not that you, you will have to uh, control each and every CU during operations. It's more of a, the peak of tension that you need when you're offering uh, host broadcasting uh, services uh, during the few minutes before the session begins normally you have a lot of work and then during the session during the transmission there's very little work to do but typically I would say 10 20 is the limit that you should be able to control because going beyond that it becomes complicated okay okay um, from Mark, mm -hmm. your CU has same features connected to your big connector system than your small crossnet. Interesting. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yes. As long as you have audio over IP uh, exactly. on the intercom. Yeah, exactly the Be same. Because of Dante. Okay. Uh, no, not not only due to Dante, but the the cross mapper is the same for both connection oh, and for the cross. -mapper. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're right. You're right. Sorry. Okay. Um. Well, people, uh, we we really are uh, run out of time. Okay. Uh, there there are a, a lot of questions here. Okay, but we will be answered um, any of them by email. Okay. So well, thanks again. Okay. For, for your attention in a new webinar here at AQ. Uh, we expect to see you again. Uh, as a reminder, there is a survey before you leave. So please, uh, we, we want to receive your feedback, okay? In order to prepare very good quality presentation for the next time. Okay, people, bye-bye. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Bye, Peter. Bye -bye.